the examination of the ear. With the examination of the ear, we're going to do the inspection and palpation of the auricle or the pina and the mastoid bone. We're also going to do inspection and palpation of the external canal, ear canal or the external auditory ear canal um, and the tympanic membrane. Um, with the inspection of the auricle or the pina, remember we must look at we must look at the size and shape of the auricle. Um, it must be in equal size and in similar appearance. So we have to look at both ears, but we're just going to look at the one ear now at the moment. So we look at the size and the appearance of the ear if it's normal. The other thing that we must also look at is we must look at the position of the ear. We must see if the position of the ears is also normal. It must be in line with the eyebrow and it must be in the earlobe must be in line with the nose. And that is the normal position of the ear. We must also look if there's any lesions or discolorations of abnormal swellings or tags on the ear, external ear. Also, we look is if the mastoid bone at the back of the ear, if the mastoid process is normal, if there's no redness or swelling, uh, um, which will indicate an infection. That, after the inspection of the ear, of the external ear, we also do the palpation of the external ear, which is the palpation over the mastoid process for any swelling and pain. We feel over the auricle or the pinna for any nodules, any tenderness or pain on the earlobe, and also we, we um, apply pressure on the tragus to feel if there's any tenderness of pain, which will give an indication of an ex external uh, uh, or ex uh, otitis externa. Okay, we go on to the examination of the uh, internal ear, which will include the examination of the external auditory canal with a specular, with the otoscope. And when we do the inspection of the external auditory canal, we're going to look and inspect if there is a presence of discharge, blood, foreign objects, swelling, um, excessive wax. Um, we're going to look if there is impacted wax, because if there is impacted wax, we cannot examine the external auditory canal properly, and then we have to refer for ear syringing. But now we're going to do, if we go in with the otoscope to examine the, the external auditory canal and the tympanic membrane, there is normal features that we must look at. Okay? There's normal features that we're going to look at. We said we're going to pull the ear up and back for the adult. And to do that, we straight, while we're doing that, is we're straightening, straightening the ear canal so that we can focus on the tympanic membrane. So instead, as I said before, carefully. And we inspect. And after you find your findings, we take it out and we tell the patient what we have found. But when we do the inspection of the tympanic membrane, we must look for the four following normal findings. The color of the tympanic membrane is supposed to be pearly gray, shiny, and transparent. We also look to see if, if there is sections of the malleus bone visible. So the malleus bone, which is attached from the inside of the tympanic membrane in the middle, the malleus bone has got three sections. It is the the handle of malus and the short process of malus. That you must be able to see through the otoscope. It must be visible. The handle of malus and the, and, the, and the short process of malus which comes out on the tympanic membrane like a tip. Okay. The other thing you must also observe in the inside of, on the tympanic membrane is um, the light reflex. Now the light reflex on the ear on the tympanic membrane will be on the left side, uh, the left ear, it will be in, in the seven o'clock position, the light reflex. Now the light reflex 
is the reflex of the otoscope on the tympanic membrane. If it's the left ear, it will be in the 7 o'clock position. If it's in the right ear, the light reflex will be in the 5 o'clock position. So just remember that. We must also look on the tympanic membrane if it is intact. That means there must be no perforations or um, um, uh, openings, a perforation or an opening on the tympanic membrane. It must be intact. Okay. Um, the other thing, you were, the abnormal findings on the tympanic membrane would also be, if you, you remember, the, the tympanic membrane must be concave in shape. Concave. So if the tympanic membrane is retracted, it could be that there is blockage of the eustachian uh, tube. The other thing that we'll also find, if there's a bulging tympanic membrane, it could be an indication of increased pressure, which we find in otitis media. And important of all is if the tympanic membrane is not polygrain transparent, that means, and it is red, that means that there is an ear infection. And that concludes the examination of